Good health to all from Rexall. It's the Phil Harris Alice Fay Show, presented by the makers of Rexall drug products and 10,000 independent Rexall family druggists. Good evening. This is your Rexall family druggist with a friendly warning from the 10,000 independent Rexall family druggists. Rexall's great one-cent sale has only one more day to go. Yes, tomorrow, Monday is your last chance to buy two regular Rexall-branded guaranteed products for the price of one, plus one cent. Now, there are exactly 426 of these twin bargains. Every drugstore need you could possibly have is included. And because it's such a tremendous sale, we Rexall family druggists don't want you to let this money-saving opportunity pass. Remember, the offer holds good until the closing of our stores tomorrow night. Exactly 426 different top-quality Rexall-branded guaranteed products. Two for the price of one plus a penny. And you know you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. And now your Rexall family druggist brings you the Phil Harris Alice Fay Show. Written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Anne Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Fay and Phil Harris. <laughs> Today, things are rather quiet in the Harris household. Alice is talking on the telephone, and Uncle William is telling the children about the origin of the prehistoric man. And so you see, children, one of the earliest types of man was the Neanderthal. And you'll notice from the formation of the skull that it was the crudest type. It has a jutting jaw, a low forehead, and the skull has a hollow sound when tapped, thusly. Stop hitting me in the head with that mallet. <laughs> Philip, please, please hold still. I'm trying to teach the children about anthropology, and you're a very interesting specimen. You don't see heads like yours around today. <laughs> oh, you're just saying that. What's so different about Daddy's head? Looks like any other head to me. We think Daddy has a nice head, and we like it. Only because you're accustomed to it, dear. <laughs> the formation of his head is a direct throwback to the prehistoric man. Oh, it's just a shame that students of anthropology throughout the world can't see it. <laughs> well, why can't they? I'll shrink it, put it in a bottle, and send it on tour. <laughs> One-nighters, maybe. Philip, please don't be ridiculous. It's... I wonder if it could be done. All right. <laughs> I was only kidding. You got a lot of nerve using my head as a Jenny pig. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with my looks. I'm oh, just... Oh, Phil. Phil, Daryl Zanuck just called. You mean Daryl Zanuck, the executive producer of 20th Century Fox, the studio that made Wabash Avenue, which stars the new darling of the silver screen, Philip Wonga Harris? <laughs> what did Zan want? Well, he said he saw Wabash Avenue again. Again? Mm -hmm. He's already seen it ten times. Well, he said he wanted to study your performance once more And, well, he wants you to come over to his house for dinner tonight Well, he's wasting his time Like I told him before, I ain't gonna give him his money back <laughs> But Phil, he's having a dinner party in your honor He thinks you're a great actor He does? Oh, I knew my four years as a dramatic student at Yale wouldn't be wasted <laughs> My fraternity brothers will be proud of me what fraternity? Fiberta Kaplan. <laughs> Philip, the fraternity is Phi Beta Kappa. That's the road company. <laughs> now, Phil, stop wasting time. Mr. Zanuck wants us there at eight, so you'd better start laying your clothes out. Yeah, it's probably going to be a swanky dinner, too, so I'd better dress, you know, something appropriate. Alice, press my red check mess jacket. <laughs> oh, but it's formal. Oh, it is? Well, in that case, uh, press my midnight blue plaid, the one with the hunting scene lining. <laughs> Phil, you'll need a tuxedo. Oh, well, that's okay. I'll wear the one I bought years ago when I started my first band. Phil, you're not going to wear that tuxedo. What's wrong with it? 
It's a little too flashy. I don't mind the red stripe down the pants legs or the green lapels, but that shirt is impossible. What's wrong with the shirt, Alice? Well, every three seconds, the front lights up and says, Swing and jive with Phil Harris and his do wah dinny fine. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Well, I'll, I'll admit it doesn't look as good as it used to. Three of the bulbs are burned out. <laughs> suit sounds positively atrocious. Who tailored it for you? It wasn't tailored. I had it constructed by the General Outdoor Sign Company. <laughs> Honey, you're going to have to go out and buy a new tuxedo right now. And I know a very exclusive men's shop in Beverly Hills that has beautiful clothes. All right, all right. If I have to, I have to, but I can't... Uh-oh. I don't know if I can make it tonight, honey. Frankie and me have a very important business engagement. What business engagement? Well, Arturo Toscanini is recording a new symphony, and Remley and me have to be there as technical advisors. <laughs> Tosky won't make a move without us. <laughs> well, Tosky will have to struggle along without you tonight. Oh, but honey, it's important that Hi, I be... Hi, Curly. Hello, Alice. Hello, Frankie. Curly, I came over a little early. I thought we could start a little sooner. Frankie, I can't go now. I gotta go out and buy a tuxedo. What for? Poker game tonight ain't formal. <laughs> Uh, uh, honey, uh, that's the name of the symphony It's called the Poker Game Suite Opus 1, Movement 2, Dealer's Choice, Jack Cervetta It's, uh, it's very similar to the Pinochle Polka by <laughs> Johann Canasta <laughs> well, Frankie, I'm getting a little tired of you taking Phil out to poker games every night He's my husband, and he belongs to me. Alice, let's be civilized about this. Why can't we share this boy? <laughs> I'm not sharing him with anybody. He goes to these poker games and forgets all about me. Oh, honey, how can you say that? I think of you constantly. In fact, in between each hand, the boys and me drink a toast to you. <laughs> And that goes on until 12 o'clock And then we stop Why? By that time we have a uh, little trouble remembering your name <laughs> I'll call you Bertha or Lottie or something like that I'll talk to you about this later Right now we're going to Beverly Hills and get you a tuxedo All right, so we'll get it Hey, Remley, will you go with me? I want you to go with us What do you need a tuxedo for? Oh, I almost forgot to tell you This is a big thing Daryl Zanuck's having a dinner party at his house tonight To celebrate Wabash Avenue Oh Is that the picture in which you don't do any singing? Yeah I gotta see that <laughs> Well, there's one song in the picture that I'd love to do on the program It's called uh, Wilhelmina How does it go, Curly? Like this Wilhelmina, she's the cutest little girl in Copenhagen Wilhelmina, she has all the fellas crazy in the noggin in Copenhagen And the roses on her cheeks And the music when she speaks And how sweet her kisses taste Sugar caneish like her mama's Danish pastry. Wilhelmina, maybe soon she will elope in Copenhagen. In Copenhagen. Wilhelmina, she'll share everything, including his toboggan. In Copenhagen, all the other girls say no. But Wilhelmina, she says nine. All the boys call Wilhelmina Willie, but he calls Wilhelmina mine. Wilhelmina, she's the cutest little girl in Copenhagen Wilhelmina, she has all the fellas crazy in the noggin In Copenhagen And the roses on her cheeks Wilhelmina And the music when she speaks Wilhelmina And how sweet her kisses Wilhelmina Sugar cane like her mama's Danish pastry Wilhelmina, Wilhelmina Maybe soon she will elope in Copenhagen Wilhelmina, she'll 
Wilhelmina, Wilhelmina. He'll share everything, including his toboggan. In Copenhagen, all the other girls say no. But Wilhelmina, she says no. All the boys call Wilhelmina, Wilhelmina. But he calls Wilhelmina, Wilhelmina Mine. <laughs> You'll love the clothes they have in this place. Southampton Suitings Limited. It's the most exclusive shop in Beverly Hills. They specialize in nothing but English imports. Oh, how tweedy. <laughs> now, Phil, open the door and let's go in, huh? Okay. <laughs> what was that for? Princess Elizabeth is expecting. <laughs> Alice, look at what they charge in here. Twelve fifty for a pair of socks. Shirts thirty-five dollars a piece. These prices are positively absorbent. <laughs> oh, honey, look at these slacks. They're lovely, and they're only hundred and twenty-five dollars. I think you ought to buy a pair. Oh no, I better not. I'd, I'd only get them all wrinkled in bed. <laughs> you won't be wearing them in bed. If I pay that kind of dough for pants, I ain't gonna take them off. <laughs> Hey, Curly, let's blow this English clip joint. They soak you just because this junk's all imported. How'd you do, sir? Do you wish to see a clock? <laughs> uh, Frankie. Yeah. What did the Bengal Lancer say? <laughs> he wants to know if you want to buy a clock. In England, the word clerk is pronounced Clark. Thank you, Lady Asta. <laughs> hey, look, bud. Um, can I buy a tuxedo here? That depends, sir. You see, we cater exclusively to the British colony in Hollywood. Are you British? <laughs> Am I British? Oh, <laughs> uh oh. -huh. Uh -huh. Sir Francis, hand me my umbrella and I'll run this brighter through. <laughs> he wants the law of our British. <laughs> the silly eye. Yeah. The fine Englishman you are, sir. Not recognizing your countrymen. I'm sorry, sir. I'll thank you to turn in your tea bag. <laughs> you people are not English, and I cannot tell you anything. We don't do business with just anybody. We have a very select clientele, and you can't buy anything here unless you present the proper credentials. <laughs> well, I didn't come in with no credentials. All I got with me is money. That will do it. <laughs> For $450, we can make you up an exquisite tuxedo. $450? That's a lot of money for a tuxedo. It's worth every shilling of it. <laughs> I'll guarantee you'll be the best dressed waiter in the Brown Derby. <laughs> Look, Winston, <laughs> enough of the archer treacher. Treacher archer. <laughs> archer treacher. Enough of the Eric Blower dialogue. <laughs> no tuxedo is worth $450. What do you mean, not worth it? I'll have you know that all our garments are handmade by expert craftsmen who are tailored by appointment to his majesty. All right, I don't care who they were appointed by. I don't want a suit made up. I want to buy a ready-made tuxedo. Please don't be vulgar. <laughs> What's vulgar about a ready-made tuxedo? I need it for tonight, and I don't want to spend too much money. How much do you want to spend? 
Well, I want to see one of your $65 tuxedos. <laughs> Alice, he struck me! <laughs> Now, just a moment, sir. Why did you slap my husband? He insulted our tailor. That's no reason to slap him, and don't do it again. I'll slap him anytime I please. Oh, no, you won't. Oh, yes, I will. Ah, you muttery, soggy crumpets. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> Come on, Alice, let's get out of here. There's another shop across the street. Come on. You'll have to go without me I have a hairdresser appointment Well, go ahead That's okay Frankie will help me Pick out something nice mm. Well, be sure you pick out A good one I won't be home Till 6.30 Be ready, dear See you later Okay, honey Come on, Remley Let's go to that store Across the street That over. store is just as swanky As this one Why should you pay $450 for a tuxedo When you can get one cheaper? Where? <laughs> <laughs> I know a guy <laughs> What manhole do we find this guy in? <laughs> Curly, he's not in a manhole. He moved. <laughs> he's got a very high-class store now. It won't do any harm to look. If you don't like his stuff, you can come back here. All right. I'd like to get a real nice tuxedo, though. You know, Remley, when I was a kid, I used to watch the entertainers on the riverboats, and I'll... Uh, gee whiz, I've, I've always wanted a tuxedo like they wore. I'll never forget those days. I just... When I was down... All right, all right. Sing and get it over with. <laughs> In my dreams, I seem to hear a whistle shrill Like the whippoorwill and of the whippoorwill In my ears, I hear it ringing To the past, to me it is bringing It reminds me of that dear old Mrs. Sill when I loaded cotton on that stern wheel ship, roused about, knocked about, they were the happy days, there's no doubt. On the Mississippi, on the Mississippi, where those boats go puffing along. On the Mississippi, people all go dippy when they hear a little bit of ragtime melody. It seems I hear them singing, see them bucking, winging, hear those banjos ringing. Woo, my heart is clinging to that Mississippi, dear old Mississippi, that's where I belong. I just have to close my eyes to see that sight River all glistening in the bright moonlight With my gal again I am strolling And her eyes at me she am a-rolling All along the levee see those people prance Listen to the music, watch that shuffling dance Loud in me, can't you see that there is only one place for me And it's on old Mississippi On that Mississippi Where those boats go puffing along On the Mississippi People all go dippy When they hear a little bit of ragtime melody It seems I hear them singing See them bucking, winging Hear those banjos ringing Ooh, my heart is clinging to That Mississippi Dear old Mississippi That's where I be Hey, Frankie, is this your friend's store? Yeah, there's the sign. I.J. Grogan, Taylor Extraordinaire. If you want to have a fit, buy one of our suits. <laughs> Really, I think I've seen enough. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hey, don't jump to conclusions. Look at that window display. Look at that merchandise. What merchandise? All I see in the window is sale signs. Bankruptcy sale, going out of business sale, going into business sale. Tenth anniversary sale, grand opening sale. Yeah, look at that one. Fire sale in June. Well, why wait till June? Why don't they have the sale now? He's not going to have the fire until May. <laughs> Frankie, old boy, this, uh, this ain't exactly the kind of a place where I'd like to buy a suit. So you want to buy a suit, eh, But Well, come on in and look around. Well, I don't think I can... <laughs> Glad you decided to come in. 
put me down. Now, what's the idea of dragging me in here? Just a service to our customers. Now, what do you want? My friend wants a tuxedo, Grogan. Oh, uh, hello, Remley. Hey, it's good to see you. Hey, I see that you're still wearing the suit we made for you last year. Yeah, it held together nicely. I thought sure it would come apart at the seams. Are you kidding? When we staple a suit together, it stays stapled. <laughs> that did it. Let me out of here. I'm going home. Don't I'll touch that doorknob. It's electrified. <laughs> now, if you want a tuxedo, you have come to the right place. We can make you a tuxedo that is out of this world. It is carefully put together by x bite tailors. Each stitch is a masterpiece of craftsmanship. <laughs> we'll get started right away. But look, I'm in a hurry. I need a, seat, uh, a suit for tonight. <laughs> I don't think I better toy with that. I say I need a suit for tonight And I can't wait to have it made Can't wait ten minutes? I say I can't wait to have it made And I said you can't wait ten minutes? You take ten minutes to make a suit? Well, all right, I'll put two men on it You can have it in five minutes Look, Grogue, I want to see a ready-made tuxedo. Well, you have come to the right place. Now, uh, I got one right here, and let us not haggle, because in this store, we only got one price. Well, that I like. What is the price? How much dough you got on you? $200. That's the price. <laughs> I drive a hard bargain, don't I? Hey, Grogan, Mr. Harris is a pal of mine. He doesn't want to spend $200. Have you got something for about $75? Well, you have come to the right place. <laughs> now, I got one right here on a rack that has been reduced. Just look at this suit here. Look at this. It has got a slight factory imperfection, but I bet you can't even notice it. <laughs> I defy you to tell me what is wrong with this suit. <laughs> it's only got one sleeve. <laughs> guy's got an eye like an eagle. <laughs> How do you like how do you like the tuxedo on this dummy here? Well, that's more like it. Can I try that on? Why, sure you can. This is our deluxe model, but I can let you have it for 75. Just hold still while I slip the jacket on you. Yeah, okay. Hey, Remy, look at this. This fits swell. Yeah, it looks beautiful, too. Yeah, this is what I want, Grogan. I'll take it. Here's the money. Okay, let's have the jacket. I'll take the suit in the back and have it wrapped up. I'll be right back. Won't take a minute. Hey, Louie. I just sold the suit on the dummy again. That's the tenth time you sold it this week. <laughs> yeah, that is the greatest decoy we ever had in the store. I'll put it back on the dummy as soon as the guy is gone. In the meantime, wrap up a tuxedo. What size? What's the difference? We got his dough, wrap up anything. <laughs> How about the oversized one we made for Don Wilson, the one he refused to take? <laughs> that is good enough. Just wrap it up and I'll give it to the sucker. Oh, Frankie This suit fit me perfectly in the store But look at it now This thing is four sizes too big for me I can't understand Wait a minute Did you take a bath before you put it on? <laughs> yeah That's it You must have shrunk That's what comes of having cheap skin <laughs> I guess you'll have to have the suit altered. Where? Right? It's six o'clock now and all the tailors are closed. We don't need a tailor to alter it. You mean... Pass me the stapling machine. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, Remley. We don't know anything about altering a suit. What's there to know? If the tuxedo is too big, I'll cut it down. Walk over here to the light. I can't walk. <laughs> Gee whiz, the pants are so long I keep tripping over them. Mm. Well, hold yourself stiff and I'll drag you over. Okay. On the back porch, and I'm gonna. Oh, Mr. Remley, did they get the number of the truck that hit him? <laughs> what kind of a question is that? I want to congratulate the driver. What time are the services? Julius, I'm not dead. Ah, he talked and spoiled me whole day. <laughs> Please, Julius, leave me alone. I bought a new tuxedo, and it looks awful on me. Well, don't feel too bad, Mr. Harris. Oh, but I can't understand it. It looked good on the store dummy. Why doesn't it look good on me? Why? 
clothes look better on some dummies than they do on others. <laughs> Quiet, will you? We gotta alter this suit so I can wear it tonight. You can help us, kid. You measure Mr. Harris, call out the measurements, and I'll write them down. Okay. You ready, Sam? Let's go, Morris. <laughs> Neck, 15. Shoulders, 15. Shoulders, 15. Chest, 15. Chest, 15. Waist, 15. Wait a minute. Everything measures 15. You got a very monotonous shape. <laughs> Wait a minute. My torso is a perfect V. Now cut the clown in and measure me right. Okay. Neck, 15. Neck, 15. Shoulders, 15 and a half. <laughs> Shoulders, 15 and a half. Chest, 20. Chest, 20. Waist, 28. <laughs> Waist, 28. Hips, 36. <laughs> Hips, 36. Hold it. According to you guys, I'm shaped like a pyramid. <laughs> Mr. Harris, are you sure you're not standing upside down? <laughs> Never mind the measurements. Let's get started. Now, Frankie, the first thing to do is to cut the pants legs. They're much too long. Okay, just hold still. That's one. Now for the other. Yeah. How's that look? One side shorter than the other. You better even it up. Okay. How's that? Uh-uh, they ain't even yet. Try again. Okay. <laughs> I finally got the pants legs even. Fellas, are you sure this length is right? It's perfect, isn't it, Julius? Yep, just an inch above the knees. <laughs> well, I can't go out like this. My sleeves hang down lower than my pants. <laughs> yeah, gives you a nice, natural, ape-like appearance. <laughs> Fine thing, you guys have ruined everything. I'm supposed to go to a formal party and... Well, there's only one thing I can do now. Remley, you can help me. While I go to my closet, you look in that third drawer there, and you'll find... Oh, Val, I'm home. Are you dressed for the party yet? Not quite. I'll be ready soon. Well, what's taking you so long? What are you doing? Screwing three new bulbs in my old tuxedo. <laughs> Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. But right now, here's your Rexall family druggist with a message of importance to every drugstore shopper in America. Friends, tomorrow is the last day of Rexall's great one-cent sale. You mean tomorrow, Monday, is my last chance at those savings? That's right, ma'am, your last chance to buy two regular Rexall-branded guaranteed products for the price of one plus a penny. That's why it will pay you to put aside everything else tomorrow and take advantage of this great money-saving opportunity. For this one-cent sale includes exactly 426 different items, every one of them a top-quality, guaranteed Rexall product, and every one of them going at two for the price of one plus a penny. Say, I'm not going to miss that if I have to call in a neighbor to sit with the baby. Better yet, let Aunt Minnie take care of the baby and bring your friend along to share in the savings. After all, a penny more buys twice as much. Now, I'll be seeing you tomorrow. Let's make it a date all over the country. Tomorrow, Monday, step inside the store with the orange and blue Rexall sign on the window and cash in on Rexall's great one-cent sale. Exactly 426 different fine-quality, guaranteed Rexall products at two for the price of one plus a penny. And remember, you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. We're a little late to, uh, due to this wonderful audience, so good night, folks. Remember, tomorrow is the last day of Rexall's great one-cent sale. Tomorrow is your last chance to buy two top-quality Rexall-branded guaranteed products for the price of one plus a penny. Next, Sam Spade, then Mickey Rooney in National Velvet on NBC. NBC.